It is so important to take care of your mind. And it's a cliche thing to say, but I say it all the time. You cannot pour, and I tell my mom this, you cannot pour from an empty cup. Like you cannot serve others and you cannot be there for others and you cannot show up as the best version of yourself if you are not taking care of you. The Perspective Podcast is fuel for your mind and creative grind. Each week, my guests and I provide the skills for thinking bigger, overcoming adversity, and making an impact with your work. What's going on? You're listening to episode 131 of the Perspective Podcast. I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. I'm here to help you build a killer side hustle and elevate your brain outside the day job. At the end of each episode, I plug a listener of the week. So stick around to figure out how you can get a permanent shout out in an episode, show notes, as well as in the newsletter. So today's guest is someone who is a spark plug, who's helped thousands and thousands and thousands of creatives such as yourself find connection, community, and confidence within their work. I'm talking about my good friend, Brooke Robinson, who runs the massive juggernaut Instagram account, Good Type, which is for lettering artists as a curated account, but it's so much more, which you'll hear about in a little bit. Um, And shout out to her. They recently just surpassed 1 million followers, and I've seen it built from the ground up. So absolutely amazing accomplishment built solely organically. But today, Brooke and I are going to go deep on uh, topics such as how to deal with the curveballs in life and the adversity thrown your way, the importance of self-care in terms of physical, mental, and spiritual well-being, as well as connecting with yourself so you can find your art, your voice, and your style, and some tips for standing out amongst the noise on Instagram, and more importantly, practical tips on catching features on Instagram's account. You're not going to want to miss that. And finally, we talk about pizza, meditation, the outdoors, and more. Currently, Good Type is doing a fundraiser through the Flat Water Foundation, which supports mental health for families or individuals who are dealing with cancer. Pretty important stuff. And if you want to learn more about it, there's going to be a link in the show notes, or you can just listen to us go more in depth about it and the reasons behind it. So uh, I think that's pretty important. That pretty much sums up what we're going to talk about today. Let me know what you think of this video and do me a favor by taking a screenshot or a video of you working to this in the background. Make sure you tag me as well as Brooke on Good Type and tag us on Instagram stories. That way we can reshare the love and connect with beautiful people like you. It's because you that this show keeps on growing. As always, keep an open mind and act on anything that inspires you today. Let's go. Hello, everyone. Today is round two with Brooke Robinson of Good Type. Brooke, welcome back to the Perspective Podcast. A lot has changed since you were on, let me see, I took a note, episode 33, April 19th of 2017. Wow, it's been that long. It's been that long. That's crazy. I mean, wild, you come right? up, you, you're, you've been doing things too. Yeah, a lot of shit has happened. So <laughs> yeah. you have a crazy schedule. Where are you today and where are you going today? Just give me a backlog or a front log of where you're going to be traveling right now. All right. So I just got back from New York last night. Before that, I was in Mexico. Before that, I was in La Jolla. I'm in Austin right now and headed to San Francisco tomorrow, Um, kind of traveling around. I am running good type and I am my girlfriend's design assistant for her company called Aviator Nation. And it's a dream because we're building stores, painting murals, um, just kind of traveling and opening stores. And she has an incredible team and it's just, it's been a dream. So, and also I have, you know, the freedom to run good type as well. So um, that's kind of where I've been and what I'm doing and where I'm going at the moment. Yeah, your schedule is freaking crazy. That, I, mean, I, I, I thought I had a hectic though. life. So yeah, your uh, travel is, is insane. I love uh, travel. I want to love travel more. So I'm working on that whole financial and time freedom thing. Yeah. You know, I, I'd love to be doing my thing on the road from a computer whenever, but this isn't about me. So for those who didn't hear back in episode 33 it was give a brief wikipedia page summary about yourself and then just the recap of how good type started what good type is so i am from fort worth texas originally and i went to school uh in lubbock texas i went to texas tech university and soon after that i became a graphic designer for i moved to austin in 2008 i was a graphic designer for a local retailer called tyler's an apparel uh store 
for almost 10 years. But in the middle of kind of four years in, I was feeling a little bit antsy, kind of over, you know, sitting at my computer all day, every day. Um, I loved my job. I loved the people that I worked with. I loved my boss, loved the company, loved everything. I was just, I get antsy <laughs> very easily. Um, and so I decided to ride my bike down the West Coast. I quit my job. Um, I met someone who invited me. She was like, I'm going to go ride my bike down the West Coast this summer. Do you want to come? And of course, I was looking for a reason to just kind of change things up and of course, I said yes. Um, this was in 2012. And uh, we took off out of Vancouver, Canada. And uh, yeah, we, I think, hit the border of Mexico three months later um, in August of 2012. And, um, you know, I was on this bike ride and I was kind of hoping for some sort of an aha moment, some sort of a, you know, moment that said, this is your calling. This is what you're supposed to do in life. You know, you don't have to go back to that eight to five job. And um, that didn't really happen. <laughs> but what did happen on this bike ride is, you know, the West Coast for me was just, it was a treasure trove of lettering art murals. And, you know, just being on my bike, I was better able to connect with my environment. Um, and just to kind of immerse myself in the art and the art culture. And I had, you know, on this trip, sort of, you know, reignited my love for uh, lettering and typography, which I had integrated in you know my graphic design work in the past but it was just really kind of put in my face and um at the end of the trip i had to get myself back to austin and i decided to take the train from la that train ride is 30 hours long so Damn. i had a you know i had a little bit of time on my hands to kind of hang out but uh i used that time wisely and i spent it on instagram um and in 2012 instagram was kind of you know ramping up it wasn't huge yet but um I clicked the hashtag, hashtag typography and um, I was like, because in my mind, I was like, there has to be a place for this art form to live. Um, I just wanted to see more of it. I was kind of hooked. I was addicted. Um, and then I found on Instagram, it was a great resource. And that's where I learned um, early on. I think Anthony Host was one of the early lettering artists I discovered. Um, trying to think who else, maybe Gemma O'Brien, Jessica Hish. Um, and a few others, but for about a year, I collected and took screenshot after screenshot of any sort of lettering art that I found inspirational and because I loved it and this was the place to find it. Um, but after about a year, my phone was like, you're done. Like you cannot take any more screenshots. And I was just like, okay, what am I gonna do? Cause I didn't wanna you know, delete these images. I didn't, I didn't know what I was gonna do with them. Uh, but then it dawned on me, I could start my own Instagram account and post these images and tag the artist because I noticed at the time there were, you know, art, there's a lot of artwork being shared, but the artist wasn't being credited. Um, that kind of bummed me out. So that was actually Good Type's first sort of tagline was giving credit where credit is due. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, from then it just, it really took off. I mean, the intersection of hand lettering and Instagram just sort of, you know, luck was there a little bit on my side it just, it exploded. And, um, watching it sort of observing it take off and seeing these artists from literally across the globe connect with one, each other, one, one another over this art form just kind of blew me away and everything was so positive. And I just, you know, I kept kind of writing the coattails of this positivity and just encouraging people to, um, if, you know, they're going to post something or comment on something, make sure it's constructive criticism or be positive or supportive or whatever. Um, and since then, Good Type has grown into just first and foremost, a community. Um, and over the years, I had received requests for a book and I've since published uh, two books. This last one I got to do with Rizzoli, which was a dream. Um, and which you've been in both. Thank you, Scotty. Um, yeah. And, you know, I sort of wanted to challenge myself and give others the opportunity to meet each other in real life and take good type off the screen um, and into a classroom. And so I've also done a few workshops over the years too. And I've worked with James Lewis, um, Lauren Hom, Ken Barber, and uh, just to name a few. And yeah, good type sort of fills the gaps where there might be needs and creates new opportunities for uh, people to learn and for people to teach their craft. For sure. 
If that's that's probably not, not a very short Wikipedia page. That's all right. Gonna... That's yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. So again, I found your account. I got my first feature back when Good Type. I specifically remember, like, what is Good Type? Oh my God. They have 10K followers and they just what? featured my dollar in a dream post and my change of perspective yes. post. I'm, like some of my early days of like finding my style, stippling, line work, you know, that, that detailed you perspective. You were killing it back then too. Sure. Um, but now we can flex for you. You just hit that 1 million mark. Like that's I mean, wild. It's insane. I'm just like, I mean, it's awesome, but wow. It's it's almost surreal. It's pretty cool to see the one M up there and it's just, but all the thanks really goes to the people of this community just sharing and it's pretty awesome. It feels pretty cool. Well, and I've been able to connect with some of my best friends now are through the internet that I have met through Instagram, you know, and a lot of them were people that I followed early on, like Adam Vicarell and the Bob yeah. Ewings and yeah. Mark Canesso all through yeah. your account. And now they're friends of mine that we then link up at conferences and keep in touch and send each other family greeting cards for Christmas, you know, so like, it's wild. It's truly been a community. And since we last talked, what, two years ago, then the first book just came out. Yeah. Um, I think you just were at South by Southwest and had Adam teach first workshop there. Yep. Um, and, and your goal was to make accessible online or accessible education. So, I mean, yeah, you've done workshops all over the place. Second book, you've even been like, conference sponsors at crop and panels that was fun yeah Shout out to crop. yeah what's 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 the next thing for good type i mean essentially i want to continue to grow the community first and foremost support the artists that are out there um i want to get into you know we're going to do a, a little bit of merch some art licensing the goal of good type isn't necessarily to make a ton of money i mean monetizing to be sustainable yes but it's to support the artists, um, you know, put the artwork out there, build the community and create a safe space for people across the globe to come together and to converse and to connect and to, to learn from one another, because that's essentially what we're doing. And, you know, with Good Type Tuesday, I try to either partner with somebody. Um, I've partnered with a lot of organizations trying to help spread the word about whatever it is they're doing, whether it's around mental health or you know, global warming or you know, suicide prevention or anything like that. Um, because it's really cool what this art form can do. Um, it creates conversations, it creates connections and social media is so powerful in that way. And you know, I, I just wanna continue to foster that for sure. Yeah, that's awesome and I, I think Let's, let's plug this right now, too. I want to try and get as much eyes and use my platform to give your platform, you know, some more attention as well. So I want to I talk about your Flatwater Foundation fundraiser with the Strengths and Letters T. Yeah. You know, give us the rundown of that. And first off, what is Flatwater Foundation yep. and why they're your favorite organization? And then we can kind of, you know, branch off from there. So when I worked for Tyler's as a graphic designer, uh, we partnered with the Flatwater Foundation. My good friend, Mark, he's the exec executive director and founder um, here in Austin. And he came to Tyler's looking for a sponsor to sponsor this crazy event, <laughs> um, which at the time was more of a stunt. But um, first, I'll tell you what Flatwater is. Mark started a foundation to give access to mental health and therapy for anyone in need dealing with a cancer diagnosis. Unfortunately, he had to deal with a cancer diagnosis. His father um, was diagnosed and he didn't have anywhere to really turn. Um, he, he needed to talk about it because it just, it messes with you. Anything in life, you know, you're thrown a curveball, and it's like, you can't not talk about it. And um, for him, he noticed when he was out on um, the lake on a stand-up paddleboard, kind of in a serene environment, um, it provided a place, you know, an escape and a place to be quiet and just to kind of, it was therapy for him to be in nature and to be with anyone with him to kind of talk with them about it. Um, and so this crazy idea came about where he and his friends would stand up paddle from dam to dam on Lake Austin, which is 21 miles um, in one day and call it Damn That Cancer. Um, and so Tyler's came on board and it's now Tyler's Damn That Cancer. And I've since supported him and uh, 
the event for many years now, just with my association with Tyler's. And um, I've done the 21 mile stand up paddle and it is brutal. I mean, it is very rewarding, but it is brutal. Uh, and that's to raise awareness and funds for the Flatwater Foundation. Um, and so this year, taking it up like five notches and he's taking a team to Iceland and we're raising $8,000 uh, and we're going to be stand up paddling about 20 miles a day. So we're going to do five days, a hundred kilometers of stand up paddle boarding. It's insane. It's insane. Like, I mean, I've done a little surfing. I've done some, I've done a few practice paddles. I've kind of done a few workouts here and there, but I'm, I know it's just going to kick my butt. Um, but with that said, um, I got to work with Mark Canesso. He was kind enough to create a limited edition strength and letters t-shirt. Um, which when you purchase that, it goes towards my campaign, the Flatwater Foundation. Um, and we're doing like a limited run of 400, which sounds like a lot of t-shirts, but it's really not. It's really not. <laughs> um, and yeah, I've got it on. I've got the G. This is the first time we've ever put the G on any apparel. Um, and so the back has the strength and letters and he did a fabulous job. So um, I leave, we take off on... July 27th for Iceland. So be thinking about me <laughs> come July 27th. I'm going to be like praying my arms don't fall off. But. All the good vibes to you. Uh, <laughs> real quick. So when does the fundraiser end? Um, until we reach the goal. Um, so or no really. July 27th. Bef before or until you reach the goal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't end until you reach that. And right. the goal is 8,000. I believe you, you're around 4,000 at this time. So, yeah. All yeah. right, let's yeah. sell out that shit, guys. Come on. Yeah. I need to get my own t-shirt. So Yeah, you do. I know. It's, it's, it's on the to-do list. I promise you I will because I, I got to support Mark, too. Like Mark yeah. did the, the script logo for the Perspectives Podcast, awesome so shout out to Mark. All right, well, what are the things? Like, how do you, how do you go to the bathroom on a paddleboard or eat? I don't know. That's a good question. Like, how do you do all that? Well, I was, I I was so. wondering. Those, this is like the kind of tangent questions that I yeah, usually get yeah. off track with. Um, well, when we did the stand-up paddleboard, um, when we did the Tyler's Dame That Cancer, the 21 mile, we would take little breaks. And on the, um, there were, I think, two, well, we did, we did a, a lunch break. So you just kind of paddle off to the side and find a spot to eat. Um, but I think, I mean, I haven't done the Iceland trip. Um, but I think we're going to be sleeping on boats. Um, okay. Okay. So you yeah. just paddle on a boat kind of stays with you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you, you don't have to sleep on the paddle. No. Okay. <laughs> Which I wouldn't be opposed to, but I, I hate being cold. So it might be a problem. <laughs> don't move to Iowa ever. Oh yeah. No. I mean, I'll visit. <laughs> <laughs> just visit in the summertime. Yeah. Oh, so then why did you choose to bring awareness to this campaign? I guess just to get a little bit deeper, what does mental health, you know, mean to you? Why is that so important to you? Well, you know, mental health, there's such a stigma around it. Um, don't be weak. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't cry. Don't show your emotions. Um, and my mom was actually raised to think that way. And she and I were the non criers of the family. <laughs> and, um, but you know, over time that eats away at you. Um, and it is so important to take care of your mind and it's a cliche thing to say, but I say it all the time. You cannot pour. And I tell my mom this, you cannot pour from an empty cup. Like you cannot serve others and you cannot be there for others. And you cannot show up as the best version of yourself if you are not taking care of you. Um, and you know, therapy is for everyone, I believe. I mean, even if you think you're the healthiest and you need nothing and you're all good, still talk to someone. You can still talk to someone no matter what. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything major, but um, it's, I, it just, it's so important to take care of your mental health. Um, and, you know, I've, I've had, you know, some people very close to me, my friends and family that have not necessarily had the access to it. Um, and I think raising awareness around organizations that are giving access to people that um, can use it or need it, or, you know, there are different forms of therapy. They also work with um, an equine therapy um, organization here in Austin too. So there's, there's so many different forms of therapy. 
um, and a lot of people don't know about. And so I think just any chance in using social media, social media is so powerful and just to bring that conversation to the public um, is so important. Um, and yeah, like I said, you can't pour from an empty cup, take care of yourself so you can be there for others um, and, and help others too. Um, I know for me, from my experiences, so I grew up with sports and the whole mentality is rub some dirt on it, walk it off, never show your weakness in your armor. And, and that got me in some serious trouble, like hardcore depression when I graduated yeah. uh, college, like it was bad. And then I started dealing with anxiety after that. Yeah. And then that's where like lettering and then blogging and then the podcast all turned into therapy for me to kind of get this shit off my chest. Whatever works. Yeah. yeah. Because whatever, whatever negativity or depression or anxiety you have going on within you will find its way out and it mm -hmm. might not be pretty, you know? So it's like, you've got to figure out what puts you in a, in a healthy state of mind and remember that and continue to do that, whatever it is, you know, for me, I meditate every morning. Um, I have to be in nature every day, um, you know, and I feel like the older you get, and maybe not, I don't know, but it's like the things that are important to me are my relationships and my friendships and my family. It's like, if I don't have that in my health, and if I don't have those things, if those aren't in, you know, alignment, um, I'm off. You know, if I haven't talked to my sister or my dad or my mom or, you know, some of my best friends in a while, I start to feel it. Um, and if I haven't connected, you know, with those important people in my life, I start to feel it. If I haven't, how do you meditated. know when you're off? Um, that's a good question. I think when I get, when I feel anxious, um, when the smallest thing sets me off or I feel emotional. Um, and if, for example, if somebody cuts me off while I'm driving, I don't normally get road rage. I'm not a road rager. I'm very peaceful. But if I feel like angry all of a sudden, I'm like, whoa. Honk and yell, you yeah. piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't get that far. But yeah, <laughs> you know, anything that kind of feels like the scales are tipped in the wrong direction. I'm just kind of like, oh, I need to, you know, do a little self-check. Just staying self-aware and feeling how you're reacting to things and just, um, practicing for me self-awareness too but yeah I think just feeling like um uh the smallest thing that wouldn't normally set me off sets me off and just kind of like okay what's going on I need to go hang out with myself and kind of you know just dive into what's going on up here in here I, I, I want to dig I want to keep digging because this is dig. the stuff that fascinates me too because you know for me it's really hard for me to disconnect because I, I mean this this is play and I still have the day job so I only have x amount of hours a day to do this stuff and sometimes I do feel off but with you being busy as shit and mm -hmm. how do you make time for these outlets like I would love to know more about your meditation schedule what apps you use mm -hmm. um and how long for periods do you do it in the morning as well as in the evening do you mm -hmm. use something like headspace guided meditation or is it self I kind of go back and forth kind of depends on what I need what how I'm feeling and what I need um, in the morning, I like to get up between 5.30 and 6, sometimes 6.30. Depends on what time zone. I've been all over the place lately. <laughs> yeah, it was fun trying to lock down a time with you on this one. No, thanks for accommodating. We, we always make it work. <laughs> um, I sometimes use a guided app depending on how I'm feeling. But for me, I just, I need the silence. I need to be quiet. Um, I need to literally go within to the nothingness. Um, and that is hard to do. It's a practice. Um, Way hard. And sometimes I can only stay in the nothingness for 30 seconds. Sometimes I can stay there for two minutes to five minutes. You know, it's just like you have to watch those thoughts come and go. You can't. And sometimes I'll be sitting there and I'll have an entire conversation, a dialogue in my head. And I'm like, Bro, shut up. Like, get back to the quiet. And, um, but it's like when I do that every single day for, you know, a week or two weeks. Sometimes I skip a day. It only just kind of depends on where I'm at, but little insights come to me throughout the week. Little like bits of wisdom, like nuggets of, of Like when wisdom your mind is calm. It, yeah. After, like if up, I'm like practicing. Like the answer comes to you. Yeah. It's just kind of like I'll be in a situation or a conversation or having an experience. And it's just like all of a sudden a shift in perspective or some sort of insight comes to me and sometimes I notice it sometimes I don't but I'm just like well that was cool or I never thought or who put that thought in my head like that was a cool thought or you know um you just feel kind of enlightened and you view things differently and I feel more compassionate 
about strangers, um, about other people around me. I don't know. You just like, you are more in the moment. I try to practice living in the moment and being here now um, because it's, to me, it's so important to everything because that's all you have. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't have tomorrow, the past is gone. And it's just like, I've had so many moments lately where I'm just sitting there like, whoa, it's really cool, you know, being in this cafe, hearing this conversation, having this coffee, like just feeling super grateful. Um, but just being that my schedule is so busy and, you know, another thing I, I want to talk about is a lot of times people, when they're not dealing with mental health, which is I've been guilty of this too. You pile everything on your plate. You pile so much on your plate. And I, that's me. Yeah, you do. And it's just, it's a distraction. And it's just like, the more you pile on your, your plate, the more you have to focus on all these things and the less you focus on yourself and the le less you focus on whatever it is you might, you might be sitting under the surface that you don't want to look at. You don't want to talk about. Um, and it's very important that if you are a busy person and you know that you do this, you can still take the time, get up at four, get up at 4.30 or, you know, take a five minute walk, whatever you can, you have to make the time, you have to carve out the time for yourself and take care of yourself no matter what. Um, I love being busy personally. Um, Same. Um, yeah, I just always, I'm always, I have to be doing something. It is hard for me to sit still. Um, the only time and my girlfriend Paige and I, she's the same way. So we don't watch TV really. The only time we do is if it's like um, our planet on Netflix at night <laughs> like to wind us down or something. But um, yeah, I think as busy, you can't fall victim to saying, well, I'm too busy to take care of myself or I'm too busy for that. Or another thing is people don't think they're worthy of taking care of themselves. You know, you're worth it. You're here. You're worth it you're on this earth, you are worthy. <laughs> and it's just like, people need to change the dialogue of, you know, I'm too busy, or, you know, I have too much going on, or it's not worth it, or whatever, because it is. And if you don't have your health or your mental health, what do you have? And um, yeah, so I think for me, when the schedule gets busy, I have to get up earlier, um, or I have to take a five minute walk, or um, in the evening, I have to go for a run. I mean, workouts help too. Um, being in nature, just getting up early in the morning and just sitting quietly and reading, reading something that pushes me um, and helps me to learn and grow. Um, are so all kind of. If someone, especially creative, because this is targeted towards creatives, I mean, this is universal principles that branch far outside just creativity, but you know, we're going deeper with that niche or niche, whatever you want to say. If someone wanted to start off, um, meditating to, you know, calm their mind, to ground themselves when they're feeling a little overwhelmed, especially someone like me with anxiety, you know, it was always at nighttime to shut off my head and it's guided meditation. But during the day in the morning, mm -hmm. that'd be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Would you say how many minutes would you start off practicing? Two. <laughs> I Two. mean, perfect. You know, it's a subtle, it, it's not like, oh, I'm, I've arrived. I'm enlightened. I can meditate for an hour or, you know, whatever. It's, the thing the, what you notice for me if you if you're paying attention and you're staying aware um just like i said you subtly notice little bits of wisdom for me it's different for everyone but or people say oh i don't get anything out of it it's really not for me and if that's the case then you know whatever experience you're having that's your experience but i, I guarantee i mean i'm not guaranteeing anything but i feel like if you start a practice even if you start out for two minutes or um, you download the Calm app or the Headspace app and you do a guided meditation, the changes you notice are very subtle, but they're worth it. And things are happening that you're not noticing. And just because you're not noticing or you're not aware doesn't mean things aren't happening. Um, just allowing yourself to be with yourself, if even for two minutes, is, is, is worth so much. So I would suggest um, start slow, start small. Um, start with, with whatever feels right to you and kind of go from there. Um, and, and I think it's important to be disciplined, um, and try to try to, if you don't do it every day, every other day, once a week, whatever, just kind of slowly inch yourself towards it, towards a longer practice. That's helpful. Um, yeah. some, some other fun facts I don't think people know about you is that you're a baller ass painter. Ah! <laughs> you find that therapeutic too? So therapeutic. Anytime I have a chance to create, 
Um, and I've gotten into Procreate a lot lately because, man, that's so fun. Shit's way fun. Um, it changed the yeah. game for me. I was so romantic with the analog world. Man, and I love the analog world. Like, I love to sketch, too. I mean, you know, if the iPad's dead or something or whatever. But, um, yeah, working with Paige and doing, you know, all these store build-outs, it's been given me it's given me an awesome opportunity to to paint again and I painted before like I've been in I don't know probably five or six art shows in the last year or two years um and it's just for fun and like you really tapped back into it what I did last year or two because when you weren't really doing it when I wasn't when you were on the podcast last yeah I wasn't I was like hardcore um graphic design and running good type and my mom is a painter and she's retired now so she paints a lot and um it's awesome because sometimes we'll get to paint together but i was actually at a creatives dinner a couple years ago about a year maybe it's two year, year and a half maybe a year and a half ago um and i met this girl monica siniceros and she is a painter as well and she and her friend whitney started atx gals and they throw art shows with all local female artists. And um, she was like, hey, you should um, be in our next show. And I'm like, what? It means I have to paint. It means I have to like put together, you know, a show. And I'm so grateful for that conversation and so grateful for her because she really kind of pushed me back into that side, um, side of me that, you know, the, the painting side. And um, since then I've been in quite a few shows and I'm just, I love it. And I'm sad that I, let it go for so long because I used to paint and do all kinds of creative stuff like in high school and, and in college and you know photography was a, a big part of my creative outlet and um yeah now I get to paint murals uh, for Aviator Nation with Paige and um having so much fun doing that I mean large-scale artworks are just they're the jam it's where it's at and you you've been doing murals too yeah I've kind of chilled out on some stuff yeah. this year. We just little Scotty's one year birthday coming and oh my gosh. yeah, life is moving fast. So I, I would like, I'm itching for a mural for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. You'll get it. I, I just love it because I mean, you have, <clears throat> you have to just put yourself out there. You know, you just got to go, you just got to do it. You don't really have too much time to think. And then mm -hmm. you just, and then you get up close and you're obsessing over the details. Oh, and like, yeah. You stand back but when and you like, stand back, you're like, like that shit. what am I? Exactly. Yeah, and then you're like, damn, that looks dope. And that's making a statement. So that's, oh, yeah. that's the best part. It's like, man, I did that. And that's, that's catching it. a lot of people's eyes. Exactly. That's why I love public art. I love murals. I love, you know, anytime you have a, a chance to, uh, I would encourage anyone, if they're too scared to do a mural, do it. Just do it. Don't even think about it. I mean, yeah, it's a scary thing, but do a mural, <laughs> do something do big, take your yourself first or like, yeah, whatever, piece, like a four by eight piece of board, prime it, and then just exactly. do something real quick for some practice, you know, you then go. show you can do it. And then, Good advice. And, and then attract some work from it. So there you go. Exactly. I did, I did my first like two murals for free and now it leads to paid work. So, yep. Um, before we go into rapid fire mode, uh, what's one piece of advice you give to your past self when you were just starting off? Um, I would tell myself to take more chances, take more risks, say yes, um, more often and, um, keep it open. Don't, don't pigeonhole yourself. Um, and don't, I probably would have told myself to, to say, Hey, your, your creativity, um, isn't just this one thing. Like, do whatever feels right, do whatever feel, feels good. Um, and don't be scared to put your art out there. I've always been scared. And I'm like the curator of, a, you know, an account of a million followers curating art and putting other people's art out there in front of so many people. But I was scared to put my art out there and scared of criticism. But I mean, at the end of the day, the art is, is for you. Um, and being creative is, is you expressing yourself. Uh, you can't be scared of that. Um, so yeah, probably a, a few pieces of advice I would have told yeah, I love, What's, what's like the biggest regret you have of like not taking a chance or a risk or putting yourself out there, you know, that, that kind of haunts you, but calling it also fuels you for this advice. Yeah, I, I would say, um, staying with my day job a little too long. Um, I wish I would have, Oh, you're talking to me right now. <laughs> risks a little sooner because 
you know, you will land on your feet. You will eventually you might stumble, but stumbling is the best thing for you. Um, you know, saying I'll eventually I'll get there or, you know, I'll, uh, I'll be doing this someday. I mean, do it now. Um, plan, you know, plan, but I, I didn't really have the means to sort of quit exactly. Um, but I, I I wouldn't say don't prepare yourself, do it responsibly, but at the same time, like don't drag your feet, just do it. Even when you think you're not ready, but you're almost there, just do it. Pull, pull out the rug, mm. go for it. Mm. Scary. I mean, easy for me to say I don't have any kids, but yeah. Did you have like student loans or anything? Or you oh yeah, got... still, still do. Still do? Oh, that's oh, yeah. a pain in the ass. It is. Think about a mother piece of advice. Think about going, if it's a good decision of going to a private school like I did, all right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's, that's for the audience. You know, that, that's, you know, double, double think that one. Um, <laughs> double think that one. Yeah, yeah. Think hard on that one before you pull the trigger. All right. Let's get into some fun ones. Rapid fire. If you were on death row, what would your last slice of pizza be? Margarita from home slice. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. Did you, pre- okay. you didn't even prep for that one. You just knew it. I just knew it. That's my favorite. I love it. All right. What's your favorite travel destination? Mm, favorite travel destination. I have a feeling it's going to be Iceland. Um, I love, we just got back from Mexico and had an awesome surf trip, uh, there Uh, anywhere I can be probably near the ocean on the beach, just anything to do with nature. All right. Um, here's two questions from people in the Facebook group. Um, Mila Messina one, where is it at? Did she promote Instagram somehow ads partnership to get 1 million followers or was it all natural? Cause I know the answer to this. All natural. <laughs> How yeah. was that? Just by sharing other people's work and the community kind of did itself, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, just lifting other people up and sharing other people's work, um, collaborations, partnerships. I think when I started good type Tuesday is when it really started to ramp up because it was something that it was a void that was needing to be filled among the community. I mean, now there's challenges all over the place, but there's lettering I, accounts all over the place, all too. over the place. Yeah. yeah. They're everywhere. Um, and I think just, you know, working with others and collaborating with others. And whenever you, whenever I started the good type Tuesday challenge, I mean, hundreds to thousands of people every week were tagging good type showing their work. And so it just kind of snowballed from there, but yeah, never, never paid for, I didn't, I didn't think you did. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, she asked, what is the most popular question message that you get in DM? Um, can you letter my name in? Oh my gosh, you get that too? That's so oh, yeah. funny. All I the time. Be like, hey, can I get a feature? Oh, that too. Those are definitely, yeah, for sure. You, can you post you, this? How do you respond? Um, I say, you know, beautiful work. Thank you for sharing. Um, the best way to get a feature is to participate in Good Type Tuesday. All right. That was my next question. That was for me. If someone was new and they just can't get a feature, what's the best way to get a feature? So participate in Good Type in Tuesday. Good Type Tuesday. Yeah. I Perfect. mean, that's where, because that's where I repost the most on Tuesdays. And then now I'm doing the guest curators um, on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So it doesn't leave a ton of just like random curation anymore. I'm working on that. I'm building the content back up. Uh, but yeah. Okay, and then this question, this this piggybacks great off this. This one's for Flory Fama. Shout oh, out to no, Flory. Right. She's What's that? yeah, she's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, she was. How do you choose guest type curators, or do they reach out to you? Both. Um, I'm kind of looking to see who's active on Instagram, who can bring value. I kind of look to see who um, is. Oh, I don't know that, that I think would pick some really cool artists or some art or so you're head hunting, yeah. just like I head hunt for like podcast guests. Yeah, pretty much. And you know, I want to keep it diverse. I want to bring new perspectives because good type isn't um, just me. It's the community. And I try my best to keep the community community's perspective as global as possible. Um, so yeah. Just... Do you have any help running your account ever? Not, no, just me right now. Oh, shit, you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh, if you could have lunch with one person dead or alive, who would it be and why? Um, my grandmother. She passed away way too young um, of lung cancer. She was so awesome. She, I was the oldest grandchild on that side, so uh, we were pretty close. Um, she made me laugh so hard. Like I've never known anyone or met anyone that can make me, make me laugh as hard as she can. And it's my mom's mom. And, um, yeah, I would love to 
hang out with her, do some lunch, some dinner, and just let the tears roll because we would cry. We'd laugh so hard. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. For sure. Um, is there any tips for lettering artists to get more eyes on their work or to make their work stand out? Do you have any? Because you've seen thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces. You know, what are some of the main things that really stand out to you or catch your eye in a piece? Composition is everything. Um, making sure it's crisp and clear. Um, making sure that your work, and I'm kind of sort of giving a little piece of advice here as far as like people honing and finding their style. I mean, Instagram, you know, it's a double, a double edged sword because at one point you're seeing so many amazing pieces of work, but on the other side of it, you're kind of subconsciously being influenced. And I'm seeing a lot of the same kind of work coming through. And I think it's, you know, it's great and the work is great. It's beautiful, but I'm, I'm seeing it look kind of looks like it's coming from the same artist and it's blowing me away that a lot of these pieces I'm seeing are from a lot of different people. It becomes a um, vacuum. People regurgitate it. Yeah. And, um, but keep practicing, keep lettering, keep posting, like don't stop. Just even if you think your work is looking a little similar to other people's, just, um, don't hold back. Post, post as much as you want post often. Um, but really try your hardest to hone your style. Um, something that, you know, it, it's hard to do because there are a lot of lettering artists out there now and a lot of artists in general, which is great. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Brilliant. Um, but I would almost encourage you to also not look at Instagram yes, for a hot minute. Yes, that's, you know? that's, I was going to say no disrespect, but yeah get off Instagram. Yeah. You know, disconnect. Yeah. Like you do nature. Yeah. I mean, your creativity and your art, it's, it's in here. It's not out there. It's in here. Um, connect with yourself, find your art. Um, but uh, don't Damn. stop. Don't connect stop with yourself and find your art. Yeah. You're dropping nuggets. It's that meditation. Yeah. All right. That's pretty much it. Last question. Where can people go to follow you and support you as well as good type? Um, they can obviously go to our Instagram at good type. Our website is goodtype.us. Um, I have my own little art website. It's brookrobinson.co and I am Brooke the sun surfer on Instagram. Sometimes I post art there. Um, and yeah, I think that's, that's about it. And then the link is in good types bio to get one of these brilliant good type t-shirts by mark canesso i'll have it linked up in the show notes and i'll give a good strong plug either in the intro or the outro for this too awesome. with a, a direct link to it brooke thank you so much for your time it's great getting to connect with you we, we seem to connect maybe like once a year now so that's that's pretty dope but yeah. i sincerely appreciate it it's been dope as hell to see good type just transform over the years since we first connected like four years ago know, so nice. appreciate your time appreciate everything you do for the community and can't wait to see what you do next Likewise. I appreciate you, Scotty. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. PC family, there you have it. Brooke Robinson of Good Type. Brooke, you absolutely crushed it today. Thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge and the importance of self-care, mental health especially, as well as dropping some practical tips on how to stand out online, as well as getting a feature on Good Type. Like, come on. That's so much good value right there. Um, do what you do best. Go and blow Brooke and Good Type up right now with some love. Tell her what your biggest takeaway was and make sure you share this episode with your friends or your following. I sincerely appreciate it. And if you're looking for some extra value or to boost your side hustle outside your day job, I got the perfect thing for you. The free download of the Side Hustlers War Chest. This is your all-in-one toolkit for building a killer creative side hustle and elevating your brand outside your day job. And did I mention, again, it's for free. So if you're just starting out or struggling to take your creative grind to the next level, please visit SideHustlersWarChest.com and get six free resources on me. And if you're finding value in the show and it's helped you along your creative grind, the best way that you can support the show and give back is by subscribing and leaving a rating and review. And this is also going to get you locked in as listener of the week for a future episode. And this week's listener of the week is titled The Truth. And this one comes from CF underscore Mansell, which I know is my homie Marcus from the United States and Marcus states, Scotty's the real deal. I was fortunate enough to work with Scotty when we were both fresh out of college. It's in his DNA to be positive and give people love for their successes. 
I'm happy to see an Iowa kid making an impact for so many. Perspective Podcast is a great way to get motivated to perform daily tasks, stay grinding. Marcus, thank you so much. We recently just saw each other at the pool, and I don't get to see you often, but I just want to tell you publicly thank you so much, and I definitely cherish those days. We were slanging tenderloins, cooking and serving at Newton's Cafe. Uh, Thanks again, brother. And as I sign off, I got to give a huge thank you to my executive assistant, Paige Garland, my video specialist, Colton Bacher, the homie, as well as Nick Jenkins for all the dope theme music you hear on this show. And as you finish off this week strong, I want to encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this. Thanks again for listening. It'd be awesome if you took the time to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and let the comment below so we can connect. Again, if you want to catch a shout out as a future listener of the week, make sure you subscribe to the show on iTunes and give it a rating and review.